Dr. Thomas Mather is an expert in tick-borne diseases. As the director of the University of Rhode Island's Center for Vector-Borne Disease and Tick Encounter Resource Center, Dr. Mather and his team have received wide recognition and attracted more than $14 million in funding from organizations including the National Centers for Disease Control, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the National Institutes of Health. We asked Dr. Mather, known as the Tick Guy, for the latest information on what to look for and what to do when ticks are biting. Hi, Tom. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome to the show. You did an experiment recently where you buried live ticks under the snow. What happened? When we went back the next day, they looked like they might have been frozen to the little vial that I had them in, but when I dumped them out into my hand, it didn't take more than a second or two for them to wake up and start walking. So the ticks actually survived being buried under the snow? Without a problem. So the fact that it's been so cold in the Northeast hasn't killed the ticks? Has not killed the ticks. In fact, underneath the snow, it's probably a, a mild 25 or 28 degrees, not anywhere near cold enough for death to result. So when going outside this time of year, do you, you still have to be careful to avoid getting tick bites? If the temperatures are, have warmed up, so a great example was just about a week ago, we had had a snowstorm and we had probably eight or nine inches of snow around here. We actually went out on a winter tick hunt, didn't find any. Then we had a couple of slightly warmer days, but the nighttime temperatures were above freezing. The daytime temperatures were in the 40s. And by three days after that snowstorm, we found ticks out looking for hosts. Are there places during those bad periods you shouldn't go out at all? I'm not really one to want to let ticks dictate what I do in my life. I would prefer to manage them than, than them manage me. And so we look for appropriate solutions to take care of the ticks, whether I am wearing tick repellent clothes to keep them from biting me, or if I am not wearing tick repellent clothes, certainly I'd like to do a daily tick check to make sure I can pull them off of me. So there's really a lot of things people can do. A good overall action plan is to just start to raise their level of tick literacy and start to take appropriate actions, changes in behavior, and even, you know, just a adjust their lifestyle a little bit so that they don't let ticks manage them. What's a good starting point? We really like the concept of wearing tick repellent clothes. It's a very effective strategy. It makes tick bite protection as easy as getting dressed in the morning. Like with sunscreen or other repellents where you have to remember to do it just at just that, that time, you can just know if you've adjusted your wardrobe that you just have to put those clothes on. So where do you get clothes like this? So you can buy them from a number of retailers. Sometimes people feel that the price point's a little bit more than they would normally pay for clothes and they think of them as special. You can also have your own clothes treated commercially with Insect Shield and I think that's a great opportunity that people are probably just starting to learn about. How bad will ticks be this spring? They always are gonna come out in the spring and different ticks in different parts of the country. Deer ticks in the Northeast and Middle Atlantic and Midwest. Black-legged ticks are already all over the place on the West Coast. Lone Star ticks are just starting to become active now further south, but their populations have been moving northward over the last several years. Wood ticks out in the mountain states, you name it, there's ticks in just about every spot. With, with more people out there looking for ticks and finding ticks and letting us know, I think we're starting to redraw some of the boundary lines that we thought once existed in the distributions of different tick species. 